What's up, everyone? If you don't know me, my name is Zach. I'm the founder of FullStackFoundations.com, and in this video, I'm going to share exactly how I would learn web development in 2024 if I had to start all over. And we're doing this with a little bit of a twist. As you can see on my screen, I have five archetypes mapped out here. These are five types of people that I've tried to narrow things down for that all have slightly different motivations in learning how to code, thus affecting the path that they might take. To find that archetype that you might fit under, I have a little decision tree that we're going to quickly go through. But before we get into this decision tree, I wanna address the elephant in the room, and that is AI. We've gone in the last two years from an environment where there was low interest rates, plenty of VC funding for startups, high tech salaries, low unemployment, and we've come to a place at the end of 2023 where there's a lot of doubt and fear around the future of web development thanks to AI. We've seen what AI can do and it is clear that it is changing the path forward. It's changing how we're going to work and the path that we need to take to get there. But I think it's well worth learning how to code even in 2024. So I wanna to try to dispel some of these doubts and fears by reminding you that when you learn to code, you're learning how to problem solve. You're learning how to think critically and think clearly, and that is a skill that you can take anywhere with you. So there's a lot more to it than meets the eye, and I want to incorporate all of this into the roadmaps that I lay out here in this video. So we're going to dive into this decision tree. We'll start here on the left for where I think most people will be at, which is to learn to code so that they can get a career in web development. And there are really two types of people that I see most often here. The one is on the left that wants a full, well-rounded education and has the time to do so, whether that's through undergraduate, master's degree, or self-taught. And this type of person doesn't wanna leave any stone unturned, wants to learn all the fundamentals of both computer science and web development. And it's gonna take several years to get there. There's the other type of person who wants to learn how to code to get a job ASAP. So two different paths there. Let's move over to the right side, and this describes someone who has an idea in their head or has a goal in mind and wants to use code as a tool to get there. So the first question I would ask is, do you wanna build something with hardware? If the answer is yes, then unfortunately this tutorial is not gonna be great for you. I don't have a ton to say about hardware. Embedded systems is a whole different game from software, but if you do wanna build software, the next question I'd ask is what type? And I've tried to break this down into three categories. We have SaaS products, you know, dashboards, startups, that kind of thing. And this is the type of person who doesn't necessarily care to be a great web developer, just needs a tool to get their product out the door and test it in the market. The next type of person would be someone building content-driven websites, SEO. And this person wants to you know, rank in Google and get lots of traffic and needs to get past the limitations of just a basic WordPress installation, wants some more customizability to that. And then finally, business automations. There's a growing trend in people who are maybe not in tech who just wanna be better at their jobs and they realize that you know, no code tools only get you so far and if you could just write a nice little program you could get your job done a lot faster. So those are all the different archetypes. We're gonna go through a path that I think is suitable for each of those, and we're gonna start right here. So once you found your archetype, let's move on to the starting point for all archetypes, a universal tool stack that I recommend. So these are tools that regardless of what you're trying to do, you're gonna need starting with Git and GitHub. Git is a version control software. It allows you to track changes in your code over time. And GitHub is the web version of that owned by Microsoft. It's the most popular Git hosting platform where you can push all your code and collaborate on it. And then next up, we have Visual Studio Code. This is another Microsoft product and it allows you to edit your code. It also gives you an integrated development environment, meaning you'll have a terminal. And you'll be able to work with Git directly in the editor and all sorts of other good stuff. Next up, a Mac. I'd highly recommend that for uh, software development. Nothing else really comes close and you're just going to run into less problems if you have a Mac. So not saying you can't do it on another computer, but this would be the preference. 
And then finally, learn the basics of the terminal. So basic bash commands. I have a full tutorial on bash and git, and I'll link those in the description so you can check all that out. Moving forward, once you've got all that installed, you're gonna need some patience and you're gonna need some AI. Now, I really do wanna talk about the patient side here for just a second because people sometimes have the expectation they might learn to code in a couple of weeks, and that's just not the case. Think about if you were learning a foreign language, it's really no different. It's gonna take you months before you start feeling very comfortable with this and tons of practice. ChatGPT can make this process a lot easier. And I'm gonna show you by opening up ChatGPT, a couple of prompts that you could probably use as you're taking tutorials. Because ultimately you're gonna be going through tutorials for a little while and you're gonna run into problems that are not covered in the tutorial. So ChatGPT is your friend here when that happens. So the first one is just a general prompt just say, I am learning X, Y, Z, whatever you're learning. Give me some examples and an explanation. And you'll see it gives you something really concise and helps you learn in that way. The second type of prompt is this code has an error. Can you help me fix it? You can see that it tells you what's wrong and it fixes it for you. These are great prompts to use. I'd highly recommend them as you're learning. The next question is, are you the 10X engineer? If you are this archetype and you said yes to that, you should probably take Harvard's CS50 course. This is something that I started with and I was really glad that I did because it starts at the beginning of computer science, gives you all the computer science basics and then takes you all the way to the web development side of things. I think it's just a really good foundation, especially for self-taught developers. If you're going through school, you don't need this, but self-taught people, this is an awesome course. But if you said no to this, and you don't want to learn all of that, go directly to JavaScript. Now I say JavaScript not because it is the easiest thing to learn or the best language in the world. Actually, there's several quirks with JavaScript that you will eventually come to find out, but people have some problems with it. So that said, it is the common denominator for pretty much all of these archetypes because it is the language of the browser. If you wanna do anything in any sort of substantial web framework, you're going to run into JavaScript at some point. That doesn't mean you have to use it across the whole stack, but because you can use it across the whole stack, you can also use it on the Node.js runtime, which is the backend version of JavaScript. I think it's a good recommendation for a wide group of people to start with. You really can't go wrong with JavaScript, so I recommend starting here. Just a quick interruption, I was looking at my YouTube stats and over 80% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed to the channel and it's probably because I never ask anyone to. So if you like this video, it's helped you out, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. Let's get back to the video. Next up, we're gonna talk about HTTP protocols or protocol and APIs. I put this here because this is how the world runs now. We are living in the age of APIs where every service talks to each other and other services and all of these automation platforms, whether you're trying to be a web developer or just someone automating your business, you're gonna have to learn APIs and how they work. So this is a topic that I would spend several days on to just get yourself familiar. If you wanna take it one step further, you can get into GraphQL and some other protocols, but overall, this is the basics that you'll need. Now we have come to the, are you the, I automated my job archetype or the automation expert. So if you are that category of person, then I would recommend your next step be learning the basics of SQL, structured query language. And there are different flavors of this. So in the top left corner, I got PostgreSQL. And in the bottom right corner, MySQL, there's several others. But ultimately, this is very compatible with all sorts of automations and data analysis. So oftentimes, people will be using Google Sheets or Excel. This is a super useful skill to have if you're using those tools. And at that point, start automating, just dive in, try to figure it out, use ChatGPT as your companion as you do that, and uh, have fun with it. That's pretty much the end of your journey for now, unless you decide you wanna go a little bit further later. But if you said no to this and you're looking to go a little bit further, then you should learn HTML and CSS next. 
Now this is a little controversial that I said learn JavaScript first, but in my 21 hour completely free front end bootcamp, that's how I do it. People have really liked it. And that's kind of my opinion. I think you're gonna have to learn how to write JavaScript or some other language eventually, so why not start with it? But anyways, if you want to build applications on the web, you're gonna need HTML and CSS. And I like to think of an analogy of building a house. So HTML is all the bricks and the stone and the wood. Uh, CSS is all the siding and the roof that makes things look pretty. And then JavaScript is what ties it all together and makes it interactive. So think of the plumbing and the electricity of that house. All right, so we're moving on. If you are the I need a job ASAP archetype, you just need to learn something that will make your skills marketable. Let's go up here. I think where you should start is learn React and TypeScript and start applying for jobs and working on projects. You really just have to dive into the deep end here. And while React and TypeScript are not the only routes forward, you can really look on the jobs boards and see in your area what is being hired for and you can choose based on that. But as kind of a universal, like broad recommendation, React and TypeScript are very popular. There's lots of marketability in those skill sets, so that is always a safe choice for now. If you said no to this and you don't need a job ASAP, I'd ask if you are the scrappy SaaS founder. This is the person who doesn't necessarily want to be the best programmer in the world, but just build awesome products. And if you said yes to this, I have very specific tactical advice for you. I want you to pick a framework, uh, one of these three, so in the first one, it would be the JavaScript ecosystem, and there's actually four frameworks sitting here. I think any of these are fine. If you go with Next.js or Remix, you're going to have to learn a little bit more because those do not take care of all the concerns of an application. You'll have to kind of you know, roll your own authentication and you know, email services and background jobs and stuff like that. So that requires a little bit extra work, but they're good frameworks. Now, Adonis and Redwood JS are meant to be a little bit more like Laravel and Ruby on Rails to the point where they just cover everything you could think of when building an application. So from background jobs to email jobs to the front end, it's all covered. And speaking of Laravel and Ruby on Rails, Laravel is run on PHP coding language. Ruby on Rails is run on the Ruby coding language. And there are tons of people who have tremendous success with these. And what I like about both of these is that they have really strong communities, lots of tutorials, and the frameworks themselves are very opinionated. So if you're not trying to be the best developer in the world, you're just trying to build great products, that kind of takes those decisions away from you, uh, which can be a really good thing. After you've picked a framework, stick with it, learn it really well, and start building. Use ChatGPT liberally. <laughs> Use it for everything, and you'll figure out how to build that product and get it out into the market. Now, if you said no to that, you are not the SaaS founder. Maybe you are trying to build content-driven websites. If that is the case, I would ask, are you planning to work at an agency or do some freelancing? If you say yes to that, then I would recommend the PHP ecosystem. A lot of people dog on it. You know, it's kind of old but WordPress runs something like 30 or 40% of the web still, and Laravel is an extremely powerful framework that has lots of uh, jobs out there for it. So this would be a pretty solid recommendation, I think, for anyone in that situation. But if you're not working in an agency, then the JavaScript ecosystem has some really cool stuff going on right now, um, especially with these web frameworks working on server-side rendering static content generation, stuff like that. I use Next.js, I absolutely love it. Um, it's not perfect, but it gets the job done um, and I know how to use it well. Remix and Astro are some other great ones that you can uh, choose, but ultimately between the two of these, you can't go wrong regardless. So I would recommend either PHP ecosystem or JavaScript ecosystem for uh, SEO and content driven websites. And finally, if you said no to that, it just leaves us with one last archetype and that is the 10X engineer, someone who really wants a well-rounded education and really master the craft of web development. And if that is you, then I would recommend that you choose a framework, study up, figure out what 
you know, the jobs you're going for are, figure out what frameworks those require and choose a framework. Like I said previously, I think, you know, frameworks like Next.js are great, but they're not the only ones. And once you've picked that, build your own project with the framework. I recommend starting with like maybe a guided tutorial just to kind of get your bearings. But as soon as you can, build your own project because that's when the real learning is going to start. And then moving on into the future, continue learning all of these web development concepts. I've created fullstackfoundations.com as a way to do this, to cover many of these different topics. Um, I've got lots of stuff on this channel about all of these, but ultimately this is how you're gonna master that craft and it is a lifelong learning project. And it's a heck of a lot of fun, um, especially after you get through the first year or two. If you liked this video, got a lot of value out of it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.